Okay, first up, um, we've got a bit of a kind of world exclusive thing to show you now. So we believe we're the first VR, any sports game, to be able to have head-to-head -head play going so you can play 1v1, which we've just got here. This is my colleague Sammy. Unfortunately, Yoni was going to come. We couldn't come, but Sammy came in this place. So um, we're working together on social soccer, uh, which will be out later this year. So first of all, I like... Have we got a couple of volunteers from the audience who'd like to play head-to-head -head virtual soccer? One man. Can we, can we find this man an opponent, please? Anybody? You, please. If you can sit on this settee over here, Sammy will help set you up so you can play the game. Remember the volume. Remember to turn the volume up as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So basically, as we know with VR, the big problem we have with VR is it's very hard to demo it to people who aren't playing it. So, um, <laughs> We were, we, were, we were about to, in about a month or so, get video output for audiences so we could have like an eSports style uh, setup where you can watch. But in the meantime, you're going to have to judge on these two reactions and the sound effects whilst I talk about rubbish, okay? So I've been making uh, games for a long time and I've made an awful lot of football games. In fact, I put a slideshow together and just realised this is the tenth football game I've worked on to give you an idea. And for me, VR is very much a progression of what's started, okay? So, 1971 was my first exposure to football. It was, in fact, uh, the uh, Charlie George final, Liverpool versus Arsenal, in the days when a colour TV was a treat, and this was one of the very first matches we ever saw on television. So, um, I um, actually chose to support Arsenal here, which was a mistake. I, I chose them because they were wearing yellow, but I didn't realise it was their chain strip. So now I'm a Norwich fan these days. I found a proper yellow team. And my love at that time, and my first exposure to football games back in the 70s, was Sabutio. Who's played Sabutio? Okay, yeah. To me, this is the grounding. So all of my work stems from Sabutio as the key game, which actually my father played, my grandfather played. I remember nagging my dad every day when I came home, can I play Sabutio? So I grew up thinking about how you could have a football game that you didn't need your dad to come home to play against uh, back in those days, which obviously... And I loved all the teams and all the international teams, like a, a red and white team was Manchester United, it's also Benfica, it's also Denmark, it's all very exciting and international to me as a young kid. And so my first game I designed was actually at home. It was like two little plastic nets which had come from somewhere, a ping pong ball, five rabbits, five teddy bears, and kind of knocking the ball around with some rules on who's nearest the ball. And this is my very start. I must have been, what was it, 72? I was six at this stage, annoying my mother by crawling around the floor, clogging the hall up. And then the first game I saw was West Ham versus uh, Romford. I used to live in Romford when I was, when I was young. And um, if anyone knows that, it's in Essex, in the eastern part of London. And uh, Jimmy Greaves, who was a famous old England footballer, was actually in the twilight of his career and playing, I believe, for Romford on this occasion and scored a penalty. So there we go. My first exposure at Upton Park, which now doesn't work. <laughs> And of course, the playground years. We've all been here playing in the playground, all thinking we're the best, with a tiny tennis ball, because we couldn't use a, a proper football. So every playtime before school and in the middle of school, we'd be playing football. This is all the grounding into loving football. And then let's jump forward to the 80s. So then we started to get games. We had games like Match Day and other, other games uh, on the, the early home computers. But the arcades is where football games started to shape up, in my opinion, a little bit better. And the very first one that I really loved was a game called Take On World Cup. Does anyone remember this game? It was a game where you had a trackball and you had to run like this and it really bruised your knuckles, but it was so much fun you couldn't stop doing it. And myself and Chris Yates, uh, who used to run Sensible Software at the time, were inspired by this game to make this game here called Micropro Soccer, which is actually very similar to Take On World Cup. We added a uh, curl on the ball, we added some rain, we added indoor and outdoor pitches, video rewind, all sorts of fancy stuff for the 80s. This was, this was really uh, advanced. Um, so this was, uh, this was a number one football game. This was actually hailed by CNBG as the best sports game on any format ever back in the 80s. So this for me is heritage. So this is what these guys are playing now on VR. It's like this gone forward is the point here. Then, of course, we had our sensible team. This is a sample of some of us at Wembley. Uh, and uh, we started 
the three of us guys at the back, anyway, the front two wouldn't be up to it, to, to play five a side and actually go back to playing real football again in the, sometime in the, in the early 90s. And I still play five a side these days. And this is, this is our old classic team. And of course, this is our old classic 16 bit uh, football game, Sensible Soccer. I suppose most of you guys have heard of Sensible Soccer, yes? Right, okay. So Sensible Soccer really changed for me in my life because I made a lot of money, which was great. But also, um, we started to learn how to put that Sabutio set into a computer game with a full world of football. And then, of course, after that, the piece de resistance for us was Sensible World of Soccer, which just went that step f further. And we had, um, I think it was 23,000 players in this game and 1,500 teams. Uh, and we had a whole management side, a career mode where you can buy and sell players. This is all before FIFA. This is the game which influenced FIFA. Many people don't remember the history, but me and my old team, Sensible, were very heavily involved in forming how not just football games, but sports games uh, happened. And in fact, we, there's a top 10 uh, games, influential games of all time in, um, uh, done by Stanford University in California about 10 years ago. And this game was in the list of the 10, alongside things like Tetris and Mario and Space War. So this is, this is a quite a proud thing for me. So then we, unfortunately, we were a great 2D studio. We had Cannon Fodder and Megalomania and other hits of Sensible. We were really bad at 3D back in the 90s. And this was a really ugly, late, horrible game, which I'm not proud of at all. But it, it gave us enough um, inspiration to, to close the company, or actually to sell it to Codemasters and to get out of what we were no longer any good at. So then we go forward to 2005, and we've got the early mobiles, the old uh, Nokia phones. And again, we remade Sensible Soccer for mobile phones. And actually, this was a really, really good game. We did this, we did Cannon Fodder, and we did a couple of other little games. But this is a really nice version of mobile football on, on old style. Myself and uh, Mike Montgomery and John Phillips from the Bitmap Brothers actually formed a little company and made this. And I've also done a lot of consulting. So a lot of people say to me, John, what happened to you? You kind of disappeared for like a long time. Now, I've just been consulting and not running companies which are too expensive to run. So um, I've done Football Superstars. This was done with a team up in Nottingham. This is kind of a weird... Uh, idea where it's uh, on the PC, everyone plays one player on a pitch, so it's 22 guys controlling at once. Then you've got an MMO where you buy flats and cars and have nice girlfriends and stuff. Uh, it didn't really quite work. Uh, I was just a consultant looking at player skills. Then we have Real Madrid. This is a probably a slightly worse game, a console game. Uh, again, it's licensed, obviously. And I was just there to manage the skill tree. And then I worked on this I can football. This is a again a 22 players at once on the PC. A Turkish game, very successful in Turkey. Unfortunately, never made it out of Turkey. And I worked there with the skills and the controls and stuff. And these two games here gave me a good idea of how PC games work, how this is an MMO game works, and kind of ways that these things piece together. And gave me inspiration and ideas. And then of course we had Sensible Soccer 2006. I worked as a consultant for Codemasters on this. This is okay. This is better than the 98 version, but what, we, what these guys are playing here is a whole lot better than that. So actually, uh, David Darling from Codemasters is a good friend of mine. When he played this, he said, oh, so you've made what we intended to do back in 2006, which is true. That's where we are. So, and I'm still playing football now in my twilight years. I actually played yesterday in a muddy pitch where uh, I was ref for the second half, and uh, it was very hard to ref with anger and temper and sliding tackles. But as a football lover, I didn't mind, and I played OK in the first half. And this is a team I play with in Cambridge. And you can see Tower Studio is my company we've been sponsoring. And so now we get to where we are now with Sociable Soccer. So Sociable Soccer, initially, uh, myself and Sammy and Yoni and some of the other guys, we're developing it in Helsinki. Um, these guys are all industry veterans in their own right, so there's about four of them all mixed up from, from great companies. Sammy was a digital chocolate. Um, uh, we have a guy who was uh, one of the founders of uh, Mountain Sheep and also, um, what's Sammy's company? Remedy. Remedy, that's it, it just slipped my mind. Okay, and we, we've got a, one of the guys from Exit Games, one of the lead artists there, and we're piecing a big team together. We've got the, the, the Ari who did the sound for Angry Birds doing our sound, for example. So we've got a nice team, we're growing it in Helsinki. And our idea basically was to make a multi-platform football game. So we started off thinking PC and console. This is our starting point. And then we kind of decided, well, maybe we can move to, to mobile as well. So we started adding mobile to our mix. And uh, we've gone for basically uh, in Unity, which enables all these platforms, obviously, different camera angles, 
The main one we tend to play is still the classic up, down, sensible soccer angle, but you can see we can support all sorts of angles, and for replays, it's really cool. For the VR version, basically, which we'll come on to in a sec, you're kind of sitting on the, you can imagine the stadium, you're sitting on the halfway line, roughly where the cameraman is, and you're literally just panning from side to side, following the ball. Well, your head naturally pans from side to side to follow the ball and follow the action. So the reason this game works, and it gives no motion sickness whatsoever, is because the camera position never moves at all. What we found is if you come far enough out, you've got the strategic view, which was the key to sensible soccer. Actually, this game also works on the PC, it works on the mobile with, you can see, uh, oh, I'll come back to that one later. It works with the touch screens, it works with joy pads, and it works on VR. But um, by coming out, you can get the strategy of how you can play and know where you're passing. But what we found is in the VR, funnily enough, when you can see it in proper 3D, you can actually see better the angle you're curling the ball into the top corner. You can perceive it better because you're in a virtual reality environment. So actually your finishing is more accurate in VR than any of the other platforms, which is quite interesting. So. Um, we basically, game mode wise, just to cover this very briefly, this is kind of like influencing half from mobile and half from console. So we've got a world mode, which is like a classic sensible soccer, 65 world competitions. We have 31,000 players, we have 1,000 teams, blah, blah, blah. Football game stuff, okay? Then we have the daily challenge, which is a, a daily challenge of a big match today. So yesterday would have been Liverpool versus Manchester United. You're Liverpool, try to beat Man United. Or it could be, on the days where there's no action, you're an Argentina fan, you're going to play against all the Brazil fans, and we're going to do a head-to-head -head all day and see who's the winners in the end of the day, or with your club, maybe. Maybe it's uh, Norwich versus Ipswich. As a Norwich fan, that'd be fun. Okay, multiplayer is what these guys are playing here. You can play head-to-head, -head, you can play a series, you can make up your own leagues, and we're also quite good at supporting cross-platform multiplayer now, so we can go from PC to VR, for example. This is, is kind of working. Um, and the online league, which is the big kind of mobile side mode where you're building a team, you're collecting the 31,000 player cards, you're d deciding how much game money you're going to risk on the next game to play against the guy to try and go up a league system. Um, so this is an amalgam of games, this. And you can see here's a touchscreen player. Again, it's, it can be head-to-head -head or it can be single player against the AI. We've got the joypad linked to the... To the um, phones and tablets, which is really cool because you can effectively use your phone or tablet like a console. Obviously, you can now push that onto the TV as well as a display. And then we have what these guys are playing here that's the VR. So... Cool. I think it's time for some comments now. From ah, guys, what do you think? Yeah, it's really fun. Good fun. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen anything like it before? Um, no, no. It's the first sort of mobile VR game, which is actually quite fun. Uh, no, Thank you. Good. Can we quote you on yeah, that? <laughs> I mean, um, I play VR uh, football games on the, the future of the consoles, but never on uh, a portable mobile uh, VR headset. So cool. So we're thinking, we're hoping that what, what these guys have played now, it's cheap, and actually, of course, it works on the Oculus, it works on the HTC Vive. But my gut feeling is the Gear VR, which is more affordable, is, could almost be like a playground toy. It's not so expensive. If you've got an S7 or whatever other phone anyway, to take this stuff to school and to play it in a playground, this, this is effectively because soon we'll have the co-op modes, it could be two versus two, we can end up with a futuristic table football. So the VR is not the only thing in social soccer. Social soccer is a PC game, a console game, and a mobile football game, which we're hoping as a snacky, arcadey, three minutes a match, kind of light version of what FIFA and Pro Evo are, that there'll be a good market for that, and we're bringing it out this year. But the VR supports that, and hopefully by putting a real arcade game into the VR experience, people will start to see the other uses for VR. And that's basically what we've got to say about this. Has anyone got any questions? We still have six minutes. For oh, six minutes. Is anyone another game? Does anyone else want to try it? And we're going to be here like... Yeah? Anyone else? One volunteer to take this man on, please. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Welcome. I can try the show. Okay, Sammy, you play him. So, it's, it's uh, yeah, yeah, go on. Um, uh, Sammy, that's a question for you. Sammy, Unity versus Unreal? Um, question. At the moment, it's Unity only, unfortunately. So, uh, what was the thing? Was it performance thinking? 
um, we actually had quite a lot of like uh, trouble with like network code. So we okay. actually had to rewrite all the networking code in Unity by ourselves. So we we're actually like running a beta version of Unity just to make sure that we brought the latency to zero, okay. as close to zero as possible. So that's the reason. So. <laughs> Any other questions that's before he puts his headset on the he's technical? No. Okay, so this, I'll give you some of my gut feelings on VR. My gut feelings on VR as an experienced game maker is it's very easy for things to fall into the trap of just using an experience for the sake of it, you know? Often, a lot of things, experiences I've had in VR are experiences. They're not made for long-term gameplay. We've, we've been demoing this thing for like nine months around Europe. We had a kid playing this in the London Science Museum. After 25 minutes, his mother had to drag him out of the headset to take him away. Because you can comfortably lose yourself in it and forget about the world, and your body is rested. Your eyes aren't stressed. So anyone working with VR, my recommendation would be, you know, A, it took a very short period of time. It took, to get this working in VR from the basic version, took two or three hours. Okay? To get the cameras sorted out, took about another two or three hours. That's how fast it works. We have put a second camera angle, which is scrolling a little bit up and down the pitch where you sit behind the goal. But the, the secret of doing VR as a game, as an experience someone's going to sit with for a long time, if you think about Wii Sports and people and the bowling, which was fun, but no one's playing it anymore. Why? Because it's not physically that comfortable to stand up and do that and kneel in your carpet for very long. So you want to get away from it. And this is the danger that VR game developers are going to suffer if they're not careful about minimising the physical stress. These guys are sitting down, holding a joypad with zero motion sickness. The only strain they're going to get is on their neck from slightly looking down all the time. That is it. So if you, if, as developers and as product makers, if you can think about minimising physical stress in the VR experience and maximising engagement and gameplay, then uh, I think you've got a much better chance of making successful games. Otherwise, you're going to make an experience. And we need, as VR developers, that, you know, three, four, five, six of our games to prove VR is a games platform and not just an interesting experience platform. So um, anyone who's interested to talking to us after the show, we're kicking around for most of the day. I'm at Big Indie Pitch most of the day, actually, um, judging. Uh, but Sammy's around all day. And uh, you can have a look at the game. We're also still publisher pitching right now. So any uh, games publishers interested in a multi-platform football game that also has VR, which works online, which works offline, which supports a whole card collecting game and everything else, please come and talk to us. We're hoping we have a challenger or a companion to FIFA as a light football game here. And VR is a great platform to support that and to differentiate it. How are you doing in your match? Of lag, all right. yeah. What's the score, Sammy? Um, currently it's zero, zero. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm holding out here. Yeah. Any more questions? Any more thoughts? Especially if you have any technical questions, please ask. Is anyone else making head-to-head -head VR games? Anyone else making games on VR? Thank you. And so let me ask you a question. How are you How finding you like the VR it? games experience in terms of engaging yeah, um, player, in terms I'm of getting the physical right um, comfort you. down? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a, uh, in favor of uh, room scale VR, so I'm not on the same side. I want people getting up and moving around. You want to moving around and doing stuff like this? Okay. I think that, that is a, I think that I've played some great stuff like that. I mean, we've all looked at Google Earth, I hope, and gone, oh my god. This is the, the flagship. Um, and there's been a number of games that I've played that work like that. My feeling is, you know, having been in the games industry for a long time making games and trying to make them mainstream and commercial, I think that it's very hard to make that kind of game mainstream because of the physical break your mother's vase kind of problems. Um, but I agree, some of the, there's some amazing new experiences. So we've taken an opposite approach. We've done something very ramped down, and pragmatic, but using VR in a way which does something unique to the game. So, are we done? Okay, thank you very much for your time, and uh, if you want to come see us later, do please. <laughs>